talking. I don't know how. There you go. PJ Net presents Cruise Crew Live hashtag rally every Monday night right here. And we are grateful to have so many, so many good patriots among us tonight. And yeah. I want to why introduce you. Well, why are you here? Because you are among the faithful and the and the, the correct. Things. And uh, for those of you who have not met Fred, Fred Burns uh, is my brother in Christ. We both attend the same church. If you have been here uh, during our live hashtag rallies on Tuesday evening, which is actually a worship service where we do not talk politics at all, we kind of check our anger at the door. And um, But we have featured many of the uh, videos, the songs that he has written and performed. So uh, he, he's, a, he's the best kept secret on the YouTube scene, but he's also a strong advocate for all things evangelical and conservative and I first kind of intersected with uh, with Fred back in the time when the um, same-sex marriage thing was was the political football at the time and and Fred I appreciate your advocacy of uh, Christian marriage that would be one man married to one woman but today well, that has changed that, and we can't change it actually no we, we have cannot. no authority to, to change it we have no, authority to powerful. record it <laughs> that's the role well you know they, 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 they counterfeit it I mean it's it's like um, anything of value gets counterfeited you know? there you go now mm -hmm. when I when we were talking Sunday uh, in the hallway outside of our Sunday school class there uh, you had some concerns uh, about the Supreme Court and <laughs> your take on that is a little bit different than what uh, many of us see in Facebook and Twitter and the media. So what's got you worried about the Supreme Court? Well, the problem with the Supreme Court, yeah, the judges, but it's more than that. Uh, you can have the nine conservative judges and it would be infinitely better. But the fact that uh, five of them can basically have veto power over the rights of Americans and veto elections, they have, they've overturned legal elections. That's what the whole gay marriage thing was about. Mm -hmm. Because people had gone to the polls in their states and had voted. Well, if they can overturn that election, so what if Ted Cruz gets elected in November and the court decides, well, he really didn't win because he's not eligible. They got that thing at it. Or they have some other reason to overturn that election. There's precedent. There's precedent because they overturn legal elections in states regarding the same-sex marriage issue. I don't think any state, maybe Oregon or somebody like that, was the only ones that ever voted then. <laughs> so they basically said and, and that the um, that the will of the people really doesn't matter. And, and the problem there is in the court itself that that kind of authority would be, they would, would be allowed to have it. Somebody in the other branches of government should step in and say, the court can do unconstitutional rulings. Well, in fact, it, it, I would it, say some of them are anti-constitutional. Well, it, it seems to me uh, that the original purpose of the three branches of co-equal branches of government were to provide checks and balances. But we are living uh, in a culture today where um, that balance is not being checked. So who checks no, and balances the people who are supposed to check and balance? Well, that would have to be the people. But uh, the more the more they gain authority and the more... They can uh, control the elections. See, I'm not, I, I guess my vote counts. But, uh, you know, with all the computers and all the hacking and all the craziness that's on today, it's, it's of course, there's been voter fraud as long as there's been votes. Because as allegedly in 1960, uh, Mayor Daley of Chicago, old Mayor Daley, told John Kennedy he didn't have to worry about campaigning in Illinois, he's going to carry the state. <laughs> well, mm. the... You know, the, the situation we're in today, we've been, every case seems like it gets down to a 5-4 vote, and it gets down to really one vote in that it's scenario. Weird. Now, now actually, yeah, all not. the news isn't bad. Uh, you know, we tend to, to focus on that which is bad. Uh, but Obama went on a tirade of, of executive stuff that the Supreme Court stepped on his emperor's robe and said no. They did <laughs> so, a 5-4. And again, it's five to four. I mean, every decision gets down to five four, and that is a very precarious. Now it's four four. 
now we're in a four four situation. So I don't I don't know what will happen there. But um, let's talk about Judge Scalia. He you know he's he was very popular in conservative circles, but not because of his conservatism, but because of his consistency. And uh, and he was um, well, he was quite a character. I always enjoyed uh, listening to him. He seemed to enjoy life. Yes, and and he had a calm demeanor about him, but you could tell his feet were firmly planted, you know, in in principles and values, and and he wasn't, and he could use the legal parlay to um, to make his point. But I think at the end of the day, he had common sense. Well, hopefully, I mean, obviously, he did. He was a legal giant. I mean, I've said to have the average IQ of the Supreme Court has been halved. <laughs> uh, by his passing, uh, the the and and he wasn't an ideologue. He was a legal ideologue because mm-hmm. you 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 don't even have to argue the cases for four of those judges. They we know that they, they can mail it in. We know what they're going to vote on. Mm. It's going to be an ideological vote and not anything that has any kind of legal precedent to it or any kind of legal reasoning. It's um, they want this, and that's what they're going to do. It's dictatorship. Well, I, I think uh, increasingly we're seeing uh, that the envisionment of of three co-equal uh, branches of government uh, needs some adjustment uh, because when you have a Supreme Court that is first appointed, <laughs> okay. Look in the back there; you'll see Fred's uh, bass guitar. You'll also see hanging up on his wall. His other guitar. We were just admiring your your guitar artifacts that you have. Those are real, though, and the hat that is perched upon it is real. Yeah, I need to put that on so you don't see on my bald head. Yeah, but, it's um, kind of reflecting like, a lot of light. You know, it's hard it to hard to bring. You know, lean the other way now. You're 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 on top of me right there. Yeah, you're now you're over there a little bit. Got to so. look real distinguished, like you yeah. know. Okay. I'm an intellectual. We all but, know better. Hey, but here's the, thing. I guess what's troubling me or something that I'm conscious of is the Supreme Court is not directly uh, accountable uh, to the people because, after all, they are uh, political appointees that are then confirmed or not confirmed, I guess, uh, by not not the House where, you know, we have representation votes, but instead the Senate, which is a uh, presumably... Um, deliberative body. Uh, well, they're they they're not anymore. Uh, of course, the, the the end of the republic really started with the sixteenth and seventeenth amendments. When the sixteenth amendment, which is the income tax, came in, it fundamentally changed our relationship with government. Instead of them being our servants, we became theirs. Well, yeah, the the presumption there is that it is 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 inclusive in the role of government to redistribute wealth. That that is a function of the government. Uh, well, and they have taxation. a tendency to redistribute it to themselves first and foremost. Well, my father had an interesting observation. What? Why don't we try this? Why don't we take all the money in the United States and divide it equally between all of of the citizens of the United States? And ten years later, who would be wealthy and who would be poor? Same people who are wealthy. Same people that now. were wealthy before, and the same people that were poor before, because we have neglected the the premise that equal opportunity does not mean equal outcome, and that's that's the disconnect I think that the uh, the the progressive left agenda uh, has somehow left out of the dialogue, and um, they, well, they really. They're- and they they do it in the name of benevolence, you know, always. and compassion, and 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 you know, and, and it always uh, or never ceases to amaze me how benevolent they are with someone else's money. Well, the truth is, they're not. Uh, they like I said, they tend to redistribute most of the wealth to themselves, and re- and those out there on the welfare and in the uh, food stamps, they get the trickle down. When you talk about trickle down, that's what basically they're advocating is that everybody lives on rations. And, and what more was a food stamp? It's a ration. And if you listen to the global warming types and all the other liberals, basically they say that everything you do should be regulated and controlled. You get your little ration of food. You get your ration of food, of, of fuel. You may get some health care uh, ration. You go and take your ration coupons over 
to wherever you may uh, get your living space. You know, maybe you, they'll give us all, you know, 800 square foot. You know, if, if you listen to what they're advocating, it's essentially, I'll call it plantation nation because they're literally going to live in the mansion on the hill and we're going to be in the mud huts. It's, it's not unlike Annie Bell and plantation. Have you ever considered the, the crony capitalist portion of a program such as food stamps? For example, uh, we all, you know, have stories to tell how someone has checked out in the grocery line buying better stuff than we could buy and go put once. it in a car that's better than the one we're driving. But, you know, what, what is seldom thought about is that these people are actually being used to redistribute wealth to the likes of Winn-Dixie and Publix. We, the taxpayers, are underwriting the purchasing power of people who otherwise would not have it. You ever think about that? Well, yeah, because basically you they learned long ago. What was it that Tocqueville said? That America will be great until a certain large portion of the population realizes they can vote themselves a piece of the public treasury. And then America will decline. Because basically that's where we are now. You're pitting the one... You know, you do the math on it and, OK, 20 uh, percent of the people have all the money. Well, 20 percent of the people can't elect anybody. <laughs> so uh, and then what I tell my uh, liberal progressive, uh, call them misnamed progressives because they're anything but. Is that people of wealth can defend their wealth and they will defend it and they do defend it. So what you when you have your progressive government, you essentially have a protection racket. And so if you do business with that government in your face, you pay them off. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what these big corp when all they complain about the big corporations running government, it's not really what's happening. They are paying their protection to be left alone. You know, I was I made a, a it's, thought it's came in like my mind in the Chicago in the 1920s. The other day, if if Ted Cruz weren't running for president, I'd I would like to see him on the Supreme Court. I guess he, uh, he's quite I a legal. He he's he's brilliant. Uh, uh, you know, he's, wrote, he's got the experience. He's got the principles. Uh, he he's got the resume to do that job. Now. I, you know, so maybe Obama, in his twisted political strategy, would perhaps nominate Ted Cruz to take him out of, <laughs> out of the race. <laughs> you know, that that happened in my family. Back in the 1930s, I had an uncle. He was Speaker of the House. He was Attorney General. And he was they were trying to get him to run for governor. And there was a governor named Dave Schultz. He's our only Jewish governor. And apparently Here in Florida, he appointed my people. uncle to the Florida Supreme Court so he wouldn't <laughs> so run. He wouldn't run. <laughs> well, Fred, listen, it, it, I'm really glad that you uh, stopped by. And Fred can be found on Twitter. He is Scrap Iron SS. SS standing for Song Smith. Well, that's my music. That, Mostly I do music on Facebook and, Fred, and, and politics and, uh, slammed into us. So we, we have. <laughs> well, that all intersects fine. And uh, but Fred, I'm glad you've joined us tonight. And I hope you hang around and just have some fun, meet some of the great people here. And uh, folks, you, uh, if you don't know Fred, if you're not following Fred on Twitter, I hope you do so. Fred, you've also got a blog, and you've got a YouTube channel. I hope that you will post links to both uh, in our chat room because uh, we have sure. used some of your music here. So feel free to do that and uh, enjoy the Cruise Crew Rally. And uh, Fred, I'll uh, thank you. For your service and give you the last word well it's you know it's it's good to have uh, folks of like mind because the uh one of the things that the uh media and all try to do is to isolate us and make make us think we're the only ones out there so uh they think like we do well of course with with uh, the new modern media they've lost that monopoly and uh and so it's uh there's a lot more of us than than we realize we're, and that's why we're a good team thank you so much fred yes sir uh have a great night